I'm gonna talk about the first time I went uh, to live in Sweden. In the airport, um, after we boarded the plane in Italy, uh, they, they made some surprise uh, check on the plane and they found, uh, they told us a missing screw. Uh, so the airport refused to let the plane fly. Uh, and the airplane company was saying that uh, the plane could fly. Uh, so so we, we actually waited inside the plane for several hours, uh, just next to the airport. <laughs> Uh, and finally they did let the the plane take off and of course I missed my connecting flight uh, and before the when we were waiting for this answer whether we could uh, leave or not um, there was a man inside the plane saying that uh, actually he voted for <laughs> for flying anyways because if we have to die we have to die <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, that generated a bit of panic in there. Uh, and then, of course, because I missed my connecting flight, uh, somehow in all of this, they they flew me to Denmark, because I flew to Belgium, and then they flew me to Denmark, and then they flew me to Sweden. And in all of this, my luggage got lost. Uh, <laughs> and I had actually a bigger luggage that uh, that I had sent by post with tracking but we will talk about it later so i arrived in the middle of the night in sweden uh, with no luggage <laughs> only one t-shirt inside my backpack and i tried to get money from an atm and my both of my bank cards did not work so i took a taxi to my bed and breakfast that they had booked and they paid him in euros and of course he wanted to be paid like twice as much as, as, as what the conversion was, uh, but I had no other option. And also it was minus 20 degrees, so it was fairly cold. Uh, the, the, the people in the, in the bed and breakfast, they were really nice actually. They, they accepted to be paid in euros with a um, fair exchange rate and, uh, and they, they gave me the reminder in uh, Swedish money so so then that was nice I had some spending money uh, anyways I had um, I had paid for the rent for one month in advance from the internet so so I, I had a place where where I could stay because I had no money I I went around just on foot uh, and it, but it was minus 20 degrees so it was not a very pleasant experience and I had no money, so I couldn't really eat. <laughs> so I was getting a bit uh, weakened. Anyways, uh, we had a meeting in the university to explain us things. And they went there and it was very difficult to, to find this place because it was in the physics department, but people in, inside the physics department didn't know they were inside the physics department. So, so I went a bit around without finding it. And eventually I, I went to get the keys for for my room and uh, and I took possession of my room. And in my room there was a, there was a bed frame, but no bed. So initially I slept on uh, I took the pillows from from my IKEA armchair. I put it on the bed and I I slept in fetal position on the bed using my jacket as a blanket because also I had no blanket. Uh, so that was not nice, and uh, and the internet. So there was a um, Ethernet port, but it but it didn't work. Um, there was no DHCP there. So actually, I had to open Wireshark and sniff the network traffic to be able to connect. But I ma I managed that. So at least I had connection, and with the little Swedish money I had, I did buy some very little food. Uh, the next day I wanted to take a walk, but because of the temperature and the fact that I was not eating very much, I got tired really soon and, and went back home. Uh, but I made friends with an Italian guy who was living in the room next to mine. And uh, and actually he <laughs> lent me some money because... Uh, uh, and and uh, to, to rent the mattress and blanket and, and pillows and these kind of things. And in the same day... I actually received my luggage that they had lost. 
So so I had uh, in there some items, but but most of my items were in the big luggage that I sent by post, and that was still in transit. The second night that I spent there, there was a corridor party. So this Italian guy that was living next to me he encouraged me to talk to strangers and socialize. So I did. And uh, and when the weekend was over, finally, my father in Italy could go to the bank and fix my bank card problem. And the problem was that abroad I had a limit of like 30 euros per month or something like that. So, so yeah, that was a bit low, but uh, he talked to them and they raised the limit. So, so after that, everything was fine. And um, the first day that I had lecture, I um, met one girl in class that I had met in the corridor party at home. So, so I was very happy. I said, like, oh, he, I know one person in this uh, class. And I went to say hi to her. And she just pretended not to see me I just nothing like this so I didn't know how to react and I left and and that was it <laughs> and I, of course I never spoke to her ever again in class even though we were in the same class and uh, after a few months uh, she came to my home again to visit uh, the the girl who had thrown the party and she saw me there and and she realized I was the same person from class and from home <laughs> and from that place, not home. Um, so she said hi to me, but then I, I hated her at that point. So I didn't reply just, and, um, and I think it was, the problem was that, um, when she met me the first time I was wearing my prosthetic leg, but the second time I was not. So probably because of that, but, uh, I don't know. Anyways, that's the story of my first uh, couple of days in Sweden. It was not very easy. And I actually considered just uh, calling my parents to book me a flight back and going back. <laughs>